Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya We are dealing with the Tatpurusha Samasa. We have said that Tatpurusha Samasa is the is one of the four samasas in sanskrit avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva this is how panini states these four samasas tatpurusha is having perhaps the most productivity amongst all we also said that Panini has composed several sutras, be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra, or be it Samasa Anta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra, or be it Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra, several sutras, to explain the features of the Tatpurusha Samasa in comparison with the other Samasas. The Tatpurusha Samasa also has got several sub varieties. That is also a very important feature of this Samasa. The formation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be explained in a simple way which is presented on this slide, an equation. So we have X and Y, two different independent entities in terms of meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent. But these two are interrelated and the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge these two together and generate an output which is one. So now the output in the form of xy is generated. And xy is one word and this one word conveys one meaning and also has got one accent. So, these are the features of Ekarthi Bhava. Now, there's these features are Aikarthya, Aikapadya and also Aikaswarya. We also note that in this Tatpurusha Samasa, it is Y which acts as the head as far as the compound unit is concerned. What it means is that xy which is now an output which will become an input for the sentence generation will be linked to any other external meaning only through the meaning of y element. And x will have to be linked to any other external meaning only through y. There are some exceptional cases where x is not shown to be related to the external elements through y and these cases are noted down as the examples of a samartha samasa. In the beginning, we studied the vibhakti tatpurusha variety of tatpurusha samasa where we studied Dvitiya, Tritiya, Chaturthi, Panjami, Saptami in this order and then Shashthi and there we said that this highlights the fact that the Karaka theory 
forms the base of the Samasa theory. The input for the Samasa is the sentence and the output of the Samasa is the nominal root or the Pratipadika which becomes an input for the sentence. After the Vibhakti Tatpurusha, we started studying another extremely important variety of Tatpurusha, namely Karmadharaya. And Karmadharaya is stated in this section 2149 up to 2172. It is governed by the Adhikara Samanadhi Karanena. Now, we also studied that Karmadharaya is defined in the Paninian grammatical tradition by this particular Paninian Sutra. Tatpurushaha Samanadhi Karanaha Karmadharaya 1242. Tatpurushaha Samanadhi Karanaha Karmadharaya. What it means is that Tatpurusha, in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent, is termed karma dharaya. I repeat that tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karma dharaya. Now samanadhikarana is defined in the following manner. So the state of being samanadhikarana is samanadhikaranya and it is explained as Bhinna pravritti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin arthe vrittihi samanadhi karanyam. So, co referentiality is that when many words having different purposes of usage, when they remain denoting one and the same referent, then they are said to be related as co-referentials. Bhinna pravritti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin arthe vrittihi samanadhi karanyam. Now let us study this very important sutra, Visheshanam Visheshyena Bahulam, in which Panini has used two extremely important terms, Visheshana and Visheshya. In the sutra, there are three words, three padas, Visheshanam, which is in Prathama Ekavachana, Visheshyena, which is in Trutiya Ekavachana, and Bahulam. Visheshanam, since it is in the Prathama Ekavachana, which means a qualifier, becomes Upasarjana because of Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And because of Upasarjanam Purvam, the Visheshana or a qualifier word occupies the initial position of the compound, what is known as Purva Nipata. Visheshyena is the instrumental singular of the word Visheshya, which means a qualified. So Visheshyena means with a qualified. Bahulam means mainly or in a bigger domain or many times. So the words continued are sup and sahasupa, samarthapadavidhihi is always there and also samanadhikaranena with the same referent. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta which denotes a qualifier is many times compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a qualified. Repeat, any subanta which denotes a qualifier is many times compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a qualified. Since the word many times occurs in the meaning, what it implies is that there are some times when a qualifier is not compounded with a qualified. Therefore, overall, there is a situation where in some cases it is not compounded and in many of the cases it is compounded. So overall, one can say that there is an optional application. So therefore, Bahulam is interpreted to mean 
optionally. Now, what is a Visheshana and what is a Vishesha? This is extremely important. Visheshana is a qualifier, something which is a part of the qualified and which distinguishes the qualified from the others as far as the cognition is concerned. Bhedakam Visheshanam Yad Vishinashti So Visheshana is something which is a part of the qualified and which distinguishes the qualified from the others as far as the cognition is concerned. And Visheshya is a qualified Bhedyam Visheshyam Yad Visheshyate Something which is being distinguished from the rest as far as the cognition is concerned. One of the important maxims in the Paninian grammatical tradition is Sambhavavyavicharabhyam Syad Visheshanam Arthavad. A qualifier is purposeful if there is association as well as absence of it in the qualified. Only then Visheshana is meaningful. If there is only Sambhava or if there is only Vevichara, then the Visheshana does not assume any significance. This is extremely important as a principle. So now we have the meaning blue lotus. Here blue and lotus are two elements where lotus is the one which is to be distinguished in the cognition and we have blue which acts as a distinguisher in this particular cognition which distinguishes all other color lotuses from this one, red, white, etc. And now we have the cognition only of a lotus which possesses blue color and not other colors. In this way, lotus is bhedya or visheshya and blue becomes bhedaka or visheshana. So now we have Neelam Utpalam as the Laukika Vigraha, where Neela and Utpala, blue and lotus, they are referring to one and the same entity. So there is a relationship of co-referentiality and therefore there is semantic relatedness. And so now this sutra, Visheshanam Visheshyana Bahulam, prescribes this particular compound. And so now we have Neelasu Utpalasu as the Alaugika Vigraha. And then there is Samasa Saudhnya and therefore there is Pratipadika Saudhnya and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoha applies and deletes both the Su Pratyayas. So we have Neela plus zero plus Utpala plus zero and therefore we now have Neela Utpala and we do the Sandhi and finally we get Neela Utpala as the compound output which means the same thing as Neelam Utpalam. Similarly, when the meaning intended by the speaker is red lotus, where once again lotus is the visheshya to be distinguished and red acts as the visheshana, a qualifier which distinguishes this lotus from the rest, we have raktam utpalam having the semantic relatedness in the form of visheshana visheshya bhava and then these two are compounded and finally we get raktot palam as the compound output. This sutra is extremely productive and can generate many, many compounds. Now because of bahulam, certain other behaviors are also noticed by the grammarians. For example, sometimes there is nitya samasa of a vigraha type. For example, black snake. Now here we have Krishnaha and Sarpaha. Sarpa is the Visheshya, Krishna is the Visheshana and so we have the compound Krishna Sarpaha. Now Krishna Sarpa even though primarily refers to a black snake, it refers to a general tendency of a person who 
protects the wealth without touching it. So Krishna Sarpa becomes Anitya Samasa. Sometimes no compound is observed even if the conditions are fulfilled. For example, Ramaha Jamadagnaha. So Ramaha is the Visheshya, Jamadagnaha is the Visheshana, and still you don't find the compound taking place. Similar is the case with Arjunaha Kartaviryaha. Even though there is Visheshana Visheshya Bhava that exists between these two, the compound does not take place. This is primarily explained with the help of the word Bahulam, which means many times. Now let us look at the next sutra. Purvapara Prathama Charama Jaghanya Samana Madhya Madhyama Virascha 2.158 Now here there are two words in the sutra. Purva Apara Prathama Charama Jaghanya Samana Madhya Madhyama Viraha. This is one and Cha the second. Of course the first word has got so many constituents. Purva Apara Prathama Charama Jaghanya Samana Madhya Madhyama and Vira. And they are mentioned in the Prathama Vibhakti. So they will be termed as Upasarjana and they will occupy the initial position in the compound. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa. Of course, Samartha Padavidhi. And also Samanadhi Karanena with the same referent. So the meaning of the sutra is any subanta which denotes a qualifier and whose pratipadika is purva, apara, etc. is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a qualified. I repeat, any subanta which denotes a qualifier and whose pratipadika is purva, apara, etc. is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent subanta which denotes a qualified. Now we have an example. The meaning is earlier man, Purvaha Purushaha. Now Purvaha is the Visheshana, Purusha is the Visheshya. And because of this sutra, this will get compounded. And so we have the co-referentiality as well. And so there is semantic relatedness. So the compounding takes place and we have Purva plus Su plus Purusha plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha and then the Samasa Saudhnya takes place, then the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes both the Supratyayas and so we get the form Purva Purusha as the compound finally derived. It explains the same meaning as Purvaha Purushaha, earlier man. Similarly, when you have the meaning other man to be conveyed, Aparap Purushaha is the Laukika Vigraha, the same procedure happens and you get Apara Purushaha as the finally derived compound output and the Prathamayaka Vachana is Apara Purushaha. Similarly, when you have first man as the meaning to be conveyed, you have Prathama Purushaha as the Laukika Vigraha and Prathama Purusha as the finally derived compound output and Prathama Purushaha will be the Prathama Ekavachana. Similarly, last man and the Laukika Vigraha would be Charamaha Purushaha and the compound output would be Charama Purusha. When the meaning is condemnable man, the Laukika Vigraha is Jaghanyaha Purushaha and the compound output is Jaghanya Purusha and then we have same man as the meaning to be conveyed and the Laukika Vigraha is Samanaha Purushaha and the Alaukika Vigraha is done and the process happens and the finally derived compound output is Samana Purusha. When we have the meaning middle man the Laukika Vigraha is Madhya Purushaha and the finally derived compound output is 
Madhya Purusha. Then we have middleman once again, and the words Madhya Mahapurusha, they are the Laukika Vigraha, and the finally derived compound output will be Madhyama Purusha. Finally, when we have the meaning valiant man, Viraha Purushaha is the Laukika Vigraha and the compound process happens and the finally derived compound output would be Vira Purushaha. The tradition has also noted that there is another instance of compound happening in this particular context where we have the meaning other half, the Laukika Vigraha is Aparaha Ardhaha and the finally derived compound output is Paschardhaha where a particular statement says Aparasya Ardhe Paschabhavo Vaktavyaha Immediately before the word Ardha, Apara is to be substituted by Pascha Now we go to the next sutra, Shrednya Dayaha Krita Divi, to 159. Now there are two words in the sutra, Shrednya Dayaha and Krita Divi. Shrednya Dayaha is Prathama Bahuvachana. The words beginning with Shreni or layer are referred to by this particular word. And Kritadibhihi is the instrumental plural of Krita, Adi, etc. The words beginning with the word Krita. Krita means done. So here there is a reference of two Ganas, Shrenyadi and Kritadi. Words continued are Sup and Sahasupa, Samartha Padavidhihi and Samanadhi Karanena. The instrumental case of Samanadhi Karanena will be applied with Kritadi Vihi, which is also in the instrumental case. So now the meaning of the sutra is any Subanta whose Pratipadika is Shredi, etc., is compounded with any other interrelated co referent Subanta whose Pratipadika is Krita, etc. I repeat. Any Subanta whose Pratipadika is Shreni etc. is compounded with any other interrelated co-referent Subanta whose Pratipadika is Krita etc. The tradition has a particular statement in this particular regard. Shrednyadishu Chvartha Vachanam Kartavyam what it means is, in the meaning of Shreni, etc., the meaning of the suffix Chvi is to be additionally understood. Now the question is, what is the meaning of the suffix Chvi? The meaning of the suffix Chvi is Abhuta Tadbhava. And we shall study this more when we study the Gati Samasa later on in this particular course. So Abhuta Tadbhava means something which was not there earlier and which has now come into being. So this is the meaning of Chvi. So Shreni is to be appended with this particular semantic condition that it was not there but now it is there. So layer which was not there earlier which is what has come into being now that is the additional semantic condition. So we have Ashrenayaha Shrenayaha Kritaha. So the Shrenis were not there, but now they are made. And so we have Shreni plus Chas and Krita plus Chas as the Alaukika Vigraha. And there is this co-referentiality, which is semantic relatedness. And so compound takes place. So Samasa Saudhnya happens. So the Pratipadika Saudhnya also happens. And then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and both the Sups get deleted. So we have Shreni plus 0 plus Krita plus 0 and finally we get the form Shreni Krita. 
Similarly, when we have the meaning to be conveyed, namely, something which was not one is made one. And we get the form eka krita as the finally derived compound output. Similarly, something which was not a heap is now made a heap and we get the compound output in the form of Rashi Krita. These are some of the words mentioned in Shreni etc. group. So these are the groups Shreni, Eka, Puga, Kunda, Rashi, Vishikha, Nichaya, Nidhana, Indra, Deva, Munda and Bhuta in Shreni and Krita, Mita, Mata, Bhuta, Ukta, Samadnyata, Samamnata, Samakhyata, Sambhavita, Avadharita, Nirakrita, Avakalpita, Upakrita and Upakrita in the Kritadi Gana. So these words, when semantically are related with each other, they get compounded and of course we get the finally derived compound output. You can imagine when these words are interrelated with each other, how many compound forms they would technically and theoretically generate. However, the speakers of Sanskrit may not have thought about generating all the forms. To summarize, in the Karmadharaya compound, the main semantic condition is that of a qualifier and qualified. A lot of explanation of the same principle is done in other rules. Visheshanam Visheshyana Bahulam is the main sutra and other rules explain this in some detail. The primary purpose in this explanation is also to ensure the initial position for a particular word or class of words in the compound output. We also note that even though the meaning of the chui suffix is assumed as input, the suffix is not actually added and some other operations therefore which depend on the physical addition of the suffix chui like lengthening, they do not happen. Only the meaning is to be understood. We study some more instances of Karmadharaya Samasa in the coming lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.